Hello class. In this video, I will be showing you how to export 2D images from your SketchUp model uh, in order for you to import or externally reference them into paper space in an AutoCAD drawing so that you can print um, on a title block. So the first step, let's go to SketchUp here. The first thing that we want to do, we've got our model drawn. Mine's not finished, but don't worry about that. Um, is to look at our model and align our view as close as possible to our primary view here that's all uh, dimensioned and noted up. So um, the first thing I want to do is I'll, if you notice that the default view for SketchUp is perspective. So all lines uh, converge at some point vanishing point on the horizon. But if you look at our drawing here, this is a parallel projection or a axonometric type drawing. So the first thing that we're going to do is set our camera to parallel projection. Now all lines are parallel. That's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to go over to our style panel in our default tray and we're going to turn off profiles. You'll notice that that lightens up the line work um, and makes it uh, makes it a little bit crisper. Um, finally, we're going to orient our drawing um, uh, and and center it. Um, we're also going to turn off our axes. So you can do that by right clicking on the axes and saying hide, or you can go up to view and uncheck axes and that turns off the axes. Once we're happy with our view and before we place any notes or dimensions, that's important part here, is you do all of this before you place notes or dimensions. Um, but now that we're happy, we're gonna come over to our scenes panel in our default tray and click the plus button. Uh, if this warning comes up, go ahead and just hit create scene. And now we have a scene that we can come back to, meaning that if we orbit around and change our view, we can always double click this tab or you can double click over here and it takes us back to our scene. And that's important for when we start placing text and dimensions because those are based upon the view. Um, so to place some dimensions, it's pretty much like AutoCAD. You click one endpoint, click another endpoint and drag in the direction that you want the uh, dimension. However, as you can see in SketchUp, um, you can drag in either dimension. So make sure you're looking at this drawing so that you understand um, which uh, axes that you're going to pull your dimension. So I'm just going to throw a couple dimensions in here. Um, get this 10 inch. I may have to zoom in. Go back to my scene. And that looks good. Um, same thing with notes. Um, notes I try to be um, neat with, and by neat I mean I try to align my notes and group my notes so that they're neat and orderly. You'll notice that in the example drawing um, that's also the case. You can see that these are all lined up in small groups. Um, you try to avoid long leaders as much as possible. So now we've got our notes and dimensions in there. And what I want to show you is that as you rotate, you can see that the notes and dimensions can get jumbled up. But that is why it's important to set the scene, because now we can go right back to the scene and all my notes and dimensions are exactly where I left them. Now, you will also have to create your other views. So. Um, there's a couple ways uh, we can do that. Or I should say there's a couple ways that we can get hide our text and dimensions because those do not need to be on our other views. So let's say this is another view. Um, I would set that view up. I'd get, an, I'd get it exactly the way I want and I would hit the plus button and that makes another scene. So I can go back to scene one or I can go back to scene two now. Now I tend to um, just select my notes and dimensions. Again, I'm holding control to uh, select more. And then you can right click and you can say hide. Now, 
that is not saved in my scene. So if I were to go to scene one and then come back to scene two, you'll see that my dimensions are back. So what I must do is if I hide these, I have to right click on my scene and you can do that here or up at the tab and say update. And now when I go to scene one, my notes are visible. When I go to scene two, they're not there. So make sure that your other views contain no notes or dimensions. So I'm going to go back to scene one. And what I'm going to do is now export my image. So I'm going to go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. I like to use PNGs. They're slightly smaller than JPEGs. It doesn't really matter as long as it's either a JPEG or a PNG. The options. We must check our options. Um, by default, it's going to use the view size, and I am not entirely sure what the default is on anti-aliasing, but we, what we want is to uncheck use view size and check anti-aliasing. Um, we also want to change our size. We want to increase the size of our image so we get a better quality image. So I usually take, this is just a rule of thumb, I look at the width, the larger of the two numbers, and I double that, and I place that in the long, uh, in the um, smaller of the two number boxes. So I'm going to double 1560 to let's say 3000 and I'm going to place that in here. And it keeps the aspect ratio so you don't have to worry about the other box. Oops, 3000 not 300. Hit OK. Name it and save it in a place that you recognize and that you can find. Um, usually the same folder on your thumb drive uh, that you're saving your AutoCAD drawings on. And we're going to hit export. Then, oh, having issues. Okay, I got that problem fixed. So we are going to, um, again, export 2D graphic. Make sure my options are set from before they are. I'm going to export that image. Now, I'm going to go to AutoCAD, and I have um, a blank title block. So you can save another drawing, or, or save a drawing from uh, one of your previous drawings. Um, you can go ahead and delete the viewport, which I've already done here, so that I have a blank paper space title block. Um, to x-reference an image, we're going to use the x-reference command, or xr, enter. That brings up our X-Reference dialog, and this button up here, if you click the down arrow, you're going to attach an image. You're going to navigate to that folder where you saved, where you exported from SketchUp your images. You're going to hit Open, and you're going to leave all this the same. We want to specify the scale on screen and the insertion point on screen. Hit OK. And you can see that your cursor has changed in the background. We can go ahead and close the external reference uh, dialog. And I always like to get this uh, in the lower left-hand corner as close to my title block as possible. And then um, you can see that moving your mouse scales, I try to keep it within the title block. Now, you can see that I have a lot of extra white space around my image. I want to expand my image so that I make my image as big as I possibly can. Um, this is a little difficult because you have to basically figure out where your title block is behind here um, and expand this as large as you can. I am going to move this out of my way. Um, I need to make it a little bit smaller it looks like. So let's try that you can see that the white space is covering up my entire title block. That's not going to work. So what we're going to do is when we select that image or that external reference, we get this menu up here in the ribbon. We are going to create a clipping boundary. So you click that and basically what we are doing is we're cropping the image and we're going to draw a box around as close and tight as we can to the actual image itself. 
and now you can see that I've cropped all the extraneous white space out of my image. Now, um, the edge of this image will print, and I don't want that. So the next thing I'm going to do is type the command image frame, and I've already set it in this um, drawing, but it by default it should be, um, I believe, 1. Uh, I just set it to 0 now, so what happens is I don't even see the image frame here, which is good. In um, The only problem with that is I, I, I have to hover over the edge, which I can't see to actually select the image, but that's fine. So you can set that, again, image frame to either 0, 2 also works. If I hit 2, it still shows me the edge, but I know that that won't print. Those are the choices, either 0 or 2. And now if I go to a control P, go to a print preview, I can see that I don't get that image. I've made my image as large as I can to take up the space. Um, and it looks, if I zoom in, I have a very high quality image. Um, you can go ahead and print this. Um, you can right click and on your layout now because we're going to need another landscape uh, paper space. So you can right click here, say move or copy. We're going to check create copy and now I have landscape 2. And you can see that these are exactly the same, even the, the image comes in. Um, and for your other images, what you can do is arrange them. You have three more images, right? We have three uh, other perspectives. So let me go to my other scene, export, 2D graphic. All my settings should be the same. I'm just going to rename this different name. Go to AutoCAD, X reference, attach another image. Go through the same process as before. Expand this. Now you'll have to go through a little bit more um, work to expand these as large as you can without overlapping um, the actual image part. Um, and you may have to uh, create clipping boundaries on these as well. You have to select that to create the select the image itself to create the clipping boundary on that one, and you're going to arrange your three perspectives uh, that don't have text or dimensions. I just simply reuse this one for example, um, and then print in the same manner um, for this one. I hope that uh, that shows you how to accomplish uh, the end of this um, assignment. Um, thank you for watching.